Hey everyone, it's Mr. G, and this morning there was a fellow BJC teacher that asked a question about getting an API to work in Snap. And since I haven't been working with Snap over the last few months, because I've mostly been working with Scratch at work and JavaScript and TypeScript in my own personal life, I was kind of intrigued and kind of felt like trying out Snap and seeing what was different because I heard there was an update. And um, I'm going to warn you, this video is going to be a little bit more advanced than my other videos. So make sure you keep watching till the very end to enter the million dollar giveaway. Just kidding. Uh, no, but I think there will be a lot to learn from this video because uh, it was actually quite a fun challenge to try to figure out why this wasn't working and maybe what she could do next time. So the issue was that she was trying to hit a trivia question API at jservice.io but wasn't receiving anything back in Snap. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to a new tab and type in jservice.io slash API slash random, it spits back a JavaScript object, which we can use in a web app or in a program. Now, if we hit the same endpoint in Snap, so in Snap in the sensing palette, we have a URL block, reporter block. So if I type in that address and I hit URL, you see that we get nothing back, even though we're expecting a JSON object. On a side note, if you go to the file button and then go to libraries, Snap now has a web services library, if you import it, that allows you to send HTTP methods like get, put, post, delete, along with a payload and headers, which is pretty sick because it means that you can create like real web apps using Snap. But for our purposes, I'm just going to use the URL block because that should send a get request to the server and we should get back a JSON object. Now, in order to find out what could be going wrong, I'm going to open up the developer tools. Um, so in the browser that I'm using, which is called Brave, it is found in more tools in developer tools. Uh, Chrome is going to be the same and Firefox, Safari will probably be the same also. So just find your developer tools and when you open that up, you should go to the console and see what is going on. And here we can see that there's an error. The page was loaded over HTTPS but requested an XML HTTP request endpoint that has been blocked. So Snap wants us to use, I guess, wants us to use a secure server. So even if I add an S to the HTTP, when I run it again, I still get another error, which is error cert common name invalid. Now, if you Google it, you'll learn that the error is caused by the domain on the certificate, the SSL certificate, being different than our domain that is running Snap. So this leads to what's known as a cores error. Cores stands for cross-origin resource sharing. And this is a good thing for security reasons, but it's annoying when you want to get things working and you're not trying to be malicious. Now I could fix this if I had access to the server because I could change the headers that the server sends to the browser, but because I can't do that, obviously, I'm going to have to find an alternative. And luckily someone suggested in the forums to try cores anywhere .herokuapp.com. And this basically prevents that cores error from appearing um, by allowing you to hit basically any API without having to worry about the domain that you're on. So now what we want to do is we want to use this in the beginning of our URL. So let me go back to Snap and we don't need HTTPS anymore. We could just use that and I think that should work. Let me expand it a little bit and if I click on URL, we should get back a JavaScript object and we do not. And the reason for that is because I could see that I have HTTPS or HTTP twice. So let me remove one of those and let's try this one more time. And it still isn't working. And it's telling us that it needs to be HTTPS. So let us add that S again. And now it works. Just one more thing I want to mention. Um, you don't have to just look at the console. You could actually go into network and actually see the requests that are being sent. So you can see, let me expand this just a bit, but you could actually see the three requests that I made by clicking on URL that failed each time. And if we click on one of them, we could see that the domains are different. And this is what is causing our cores error to happen in the first place. We're using berkeley.edu and trying to hit jservice.io, which are not the same, so we get an error. Now, if we look at the one that did work, the one that is black, Cores Anywhere is allowing your browser to open up anything from any origin. So that's what this star means. So 
you shouldn't do this with a sketchy site, but JService seems like it's legit. So if we keep clicking on the URL reporter block, each time we're gonna get back a different trivia question and response and a whole bunch of other data. But as you can see, it's like really hard to read in this format. So let's clean it up just a bit. So I did a little bit of reading and I found out that if we import another library, we'll have access to blocks that allow us to deal with JSON data. So if you go to import library and select that block and hit import, in our operators, we now have listify and value at key. So listify will take a JSON object and turn it into a list that we're used to using in Snap. So if I click on this, you'll see that it is a list that is currently unreadable, but I'm sure if I click on one of these or double click on one of these, you can see that this is really a table. So each one of these is its own table. Now let's clean it up further because you can see that this is a table with just one item. So what I can do is go to my variables palette. And if I look at item one of this, I should be able to see everything. And here is my JSON object in a table view list format. And if I click it multiple times, each time it's going to be random. You can see that the ID is different, the answer, the question, and all these other key value pairs are different. Now I'm really interested in the answer and the question. So to extract the question from this object, what I wanna look at is item two of item three of this entire object. So let's actually create that. So item two of item three of this entire object and Every time we click on this, we're gonna get the question. Now let's clean this up a little bit further because it's still like pretty unreadable to anyone that's looking at it. So what I wanna do is I wanna create my own data types or my own blocks that will allow someone, a human, to, um, to really be able to read this. So the first operator or reporter operator that I wanna create, I'm gonna name the entire JSON object. So this block is really just gonna spit back everything that was returned by passing the response to listify and looking at the entire item in one shot. So if I click apply, now I have a block that has my entire JSON object and we've abstracted away the URL so the user doesn't have to worry about any of that backend stuff. And if I click on this, I should get my entire object. But now if I wanna extract my question, I could use this item two of item three of whatever, but I wanna abstract that even further and make it really easily readable. So let's make another block and let's call this one the question from reporter block. And this is going to take in the list. So we have to make sure we create a variable that we can use and I'm gonna name that the question from the list. So now this list, I'm gonna give it a type of list hit okay, and now this list is going to spit back the item two of item three of whatever is passed in. So this list parameter allows me to take in an input, take in a list argument um, that I can then use like so. So the question from the entire JavaScript object is this. And if I click it multiple times, that is wonderful. It's working perfectly. And it's really easy to understand. Let me remove this value at key. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create a block that can extract the answer from this JSON object. And to do that, let me make a duplicate of this entire JSON object and let's look at where the answer is. So the answer is in item two of item two of the entire JavaScript object. So that's gonna be pretty easy to make. Let's just make a block, we'll call it the answer from and create a variable called list. And this is gonna be a reporter block and let's give list a type of list because it's expecting a list. And it is going to report, what did I say? Item two of item two. So I can do item of item, so item two of item two of whatever the list that's passed in is. And because every single time the object is gonna be the, it's gonna be a list of the same format, we know that that's not gonna change. So the answer from the entire JavaScript object is this.
Now we get an error. Let me see why that is. Let me edit this. And I realized that I forgot to use the list, this parameter inside of the block. So that's why it wasn't working. So now when I click on answer from entire JSON object, we see that um, we're getting the answers that are expected. And these are all random. I think it said that there's like 160,000 questions and answers. Now the issue with this, if we're gonna use this in like a Jeopardy app, the issue is that every single time I run one of these, we're gonna get a different question. So really what we should do is maybe save the entire JSON object in a variable initially. So let me just create a variable and we'll call this the question at hand. So this is the question we're looking at. And right in the beginning, we're gonna set this question at hand to the entire JSON object. So now when I run this, we have our question stored in memory. And I don't have to worry about like maybe looking at the wrong question at the wrong time. We could just use the question at hand um, in our question and our answer. So no matter how many times I click question from question at hand, it's gonna be the same question and the correct answer, which you can see right here in this table view. Uh, the question is money, miss games, and the answer is the 1970s. So now using these blocks, I can take this a, a bit further and create a Jeopardy game if I wanted to. I could create a whole bunch of sprites that represent the squares or the boxes that someone could choose, each with a different dollar amount or dollar value. And when someone clicks on it, it hits the server, asks for a JavaScript object containing a trivia question, and this is what we have. So you know what would be cool now that I think about it? It'd be pretty cool if I show you how to create your own API using JavaScript. So if this video gets 10 likes, I'll do it. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.